Thousands of Maine students would be entitled to a free breakfast under a bill being considered by a legislative committee. Using money each year from the Fund for a Healthy Maine, the state would pick up the cost of a nutritious breakfast for low-income students. As A.J. Higgins reports, a healthy breakfast can sometimes determine whether or not a student will have a successful day in class. Inside the controlled chaos of the cafeteria, students at the Lillian P. Hussey Elementary School in Augusta somehow managed to complete the task of eating their meals while briefing each other on important social events. But it's the chatter that State Senator Libby Mitchell doesn't hear that preoccupies her these days. She says there are thousands of children from low-income Maine families who are missing breakfast at school each day because they don't have the required 40 cents to pay for the meal. Many, many parents simply cannot afford in this economy even the cost of a reduced breakfast uh, because they're struggling, as we all know, with gas prices, with home heating oil, and frankly, many of them are working several jobs. They care about their kids, and but they don't always have the right nutritious food. Surprisingly, cigarettes have surfaced as part of the solution for hungry students, or more accurately, the proceeds from the state's share of the settlement with American tobacco companies. That amounts to about $60 million annually for the Fund for a Healthy Maine. By using money from this account to make breakfast free, Mitchell's proposal will have no impact on the state's general fund that draws on Maine's increasingly dwindling tax revenue sources. That's important to Republicans like Representative Patrick Flood, who was also the bill's co-sponsor. I want to make clear that the Fund for Healthy Maine and the state's general fund are separate funds. The Fund for Healthy Maine is not part of the state's general fund. With Maine facing a $95 million shortfall in its current two-year budget cycle that could grow larger in the months ahead, Flood says turning to the Fund for a Healthy Maine is an obvious remedy to a growing problem. It is what we call a special revenue fund and is dedicated solely to health initiatives such as smoking cessation, child care and development, and substance abuse type programs. What better way to utilize these funds than to allocate some of them to address the basic health issues of hunger for our young school ch children? And realistically, it is probably the only way that we can fund enhancements to the program, the breakfast program at this time. Mitchell says her bill also addresses problems teachers face when children come to school hungry. She says teachers have reported cases of children who complain of headaches, muscle fatigue, anxiety, and nervousness because they skip breakfast. They also have problems focusing in class. Although the Vassalboro legislator acknowledges that parents should know better than to send their kids to school on an empty stomach. This is about the children. It is not about their parents. We want children learning. We'll all pay the price for it later if their education is hindered because they come to school hungry. Helen Rankin agrees. A former school food service director for SAD 55 that includes the town of Hiram in western Maine, Rankin remembers her teachers' reactions when the district's elementary schools introduced their low-cost breakfast programs. And it was so successful that teachers in all the elementary schools practically begged us because they said, what's happening and proved to be in all the schools that children who were habitually absent or are late for school came to school because they wanted breakfast. They didn't fall asleep, lay their head down on the desk and go to sleep because they were so tired and weak. It's sad to say, but some children go a whole weekend with hardly anything to eat. They can't wait to get to school to have breakfast. Later this month, lawmakers on the Education Committee are expected to continue their work on the bill that has bipartisan support and is backed by Governor John Baldacci. For MPBN News, I'm A.J. Higgins.